As usual, our agenda goes like this. We are going to look at what are feature flags and when to use them. We are going to look at the different types of feature flags and how you can use them. And finally, we will close off with some disadvantages of using feature flags. As a continuation to this video, if you guys are interested, we can see how we can implement feature flags in the upcoming videos. With that, let's get started. So what are feature flags? Feature flags are usually referred as feature toggles or flippers or even feature bits. These are efficient techniques using which we can modify the behavior of the system without changing any code. Let's take an example of this particular method. We have a method called process traits. So we have different methods which are getting called like feature one and feature two are different methods and we have some implementation in there. In order to enable or disable the features, we need a way to manage these toggles. So what we generally would do is we will add a if loop saying that if the feature is enabled, which is feature one, then go to the feature one method. If feature two is enabled, then go to feature two. This particular usage categorization in which we identify if a feature is enabled and then process that particular feature. And if the feature is disabled, we don't process that particular method or a feature is called as feature flags. Most of us have been using feature flags in production. If you have been using some feature flags, which I did not discuss in this video, do let me know in the comment section below. We would also try to learn from you. So when do we use these feature flags? We know that they are helpful, but then when do I decide I use the feature flag? The first and the foremost people use feature flags is when they follow trunk based development. So trunk based development is a unique technique in Git or maybe SVN or any version control system where you want to always release your code from the repository and which is like either master or main or trunk, whichever you call it. So we always release code from the single branch and that's why we call it as trunk based development. However, when we go with the trunk based development, there could be multiple teams working on different features, multiple people working on different features from the same repository. That's when it is very complicated in terms of branching strategies and then how do we merge our code into the master or the main branch. That's where feature flags help in terms of disabling the particular feature and then keep the code going in. So we can keep the code changes minimal and you can keep on merging the code changes into the repository and then have the code getting into production. So we don't have to wait for the complete feature completion to merge the code into production. So we might have a code which is running in production but then the feature is disabled. So we may not even hit that code path when we trigger it in production. The next one is product versioning or even product or feature launches. Whenever we have new product launches or feature launches, we can enable or disable a feature using a configuration and then the code doesn't have to be redeployed. Same way when we deploy new versions of the product, you can still keep the behavior of the system as in as the same version and then you can enable the new feature as and when we require even in the new version. Whenever we experiment a feature, we sometimes want to give that feature access to a specific subset of people. That is another way in which we can do A-B testing. So we can do controlled A-B testing using the feature flags and you can give it only for a specific subset of people. For example, if Facebook is launching a new UI and they want to test it out with a small subset of people and then understand their behavior and understand their feedback, they can use feature flags with a controlled toggler. Finally, we can also use it to control the system behavior using operational tools. I may even trigger some operational behavior into the application with some special privileges which can like disrupt something in the system or maybe correct some things in the system. So I can use feature toggles for doing that as well. So how many different types of features flags are there right now? At a high level, there are only two levels of feature flags like static and dynamic. But then we are going to see also something called as customer specific. It's a flavor of dynamic feature flag, but then I'll show you the difference between the dynamic and the uh, customer centric in a bit. Coming back to the first one, what is a static feature flag? Static feature flags are usually controlled by configurations and these are configurations which are present in a specific environment or any specific deployment. For example, I have a code called process traits and this process traits, I know that there are some feature flags and I have some code which checks if the feature is enabled or not. But how will I do that? I will have a configuration file. Let's imagine that I have a dev.yaml where I have defined some properties. So I have defined feature one as true, feature two as true in dev, right? The same 
feature can be disabled in production if let's say i want to um, disable feature 2 i can do that as well so individually i'm hard coding my features and enabling them or disabling them in the configuration files which is static and if i want to change this i have to change the code and then i have to redeploy the application right or in fact i might have to rebuild the application because this dev yaml and the prod yaml are, are like packaged into my jar or into my artifact right so i might want to rebuild it so that's why it's called as a static feature flag we can control the feature using a flag but that feature exists within the properties this is how we have been doing for ages like i have been using this for more than a decade these are like common properties few we call them properties um, now we call them feature flags because we want we want to like control the behavior of the system using this property or a flag right and this is static and that's why it's called as a static feature flag now coming to the dynamic feature flag let's take the same code now how do i change this particular or how does the behavior change when i am using a dynamic feature flag so what happens under the hood is let's imagine that is enabled method calls a separate config server and that config server has information about whether this particular feature has been enabled or not so instead of just going to the file and then checking it or instead of going to the cache and then checking it instead i would do a rest call to the config server and then retrieve what is the value so if you don't know what is a config server i have made a video on config server config servers can be a centralized configuration management system using which you can control property files without having to restart your application or maybe without having to redeploy your application so that's what config servers are for there are different flavors of config servers which people use different companies use different config servers people have their own etc etc i'm just referring it as config server this denotes that there is a centralized server which can give you the feature result whether it is enabled or disabled so here we are just calling is enabled and that is going to the config server to check if that particular feature is enabled or not depending on the response our application code or the code path will change these are called as dynamic feature flags now what is customer specific feature flag this is exactly similar to the dynamic feature flag however we also have customer information tagged along with the feature so what does that really mean is when i'm checking if that particular feature is enabled or not i also provide the customer information for example if let's say my customer name is ajay i just pass ajay as a customer name along with the feature to the config server to see if that particular feature is enabled for that particular customer so you have customer specific features which you can control as well so earlier we just had a flag which was like either enabled or disabled but now we have a flag which is customer specific so for ajay it could be enabled for some other somebody else it could be disabled right so this is where the ab testing or the control db testing is helpful and you can push the feature for a small subset of your customer and then see their behavior and then make it work a lot of product companies do that you will be definitely leveraging customer specific feature flag if you are in a product company or if you are striving to get to one if you think you are using something different from what i have just mentioned just ping me in the comment section below we can discuss so those are the different feature flag types now coming to the disadvantages of the feature flags there are some disadvantages uh, but i wouldn't call it out as a huge disadvantage but feature flags generally add complexity because the code path increases and the level of maintenance which you have to do with respect to the code path adding tests and then making sure they are tested having your integration test etc it takes a while and it adds complexity to managing your code base however the benefits outweigh the cons and also we need to make sure we don't have too many feature flags in the application if let's say we know that a particular feature has been ga'd it is advised to remove the feature flags from the code that way you have less number of calls to external system let's say for example config server or maybe if you're having a static code path you can manage minimal properties or minimal flags in the property files those are some of the disadvantages which i think are noticeable just to summarize what we just discussed feature flags are an efficient way for allowing teams to modify the behavior of the system without having to change the code or deploying the application we use feature flags in different occasions in terms of moving to a trunk based model or product launches or enabling the feature only for a subset of customer etc there are different types of feature flags like static dynamic and customer specific static is hard coded in the property file 
Dynamic is using the configuration server to figure out what is the flag value and customer specific is specific to the customer where we go to the config server and look at a customer specific flag whether it is enabled or not. Finally, we also saw some disadvantages in terms of maintaining the code path which comes along with the feature flags. I hope you were able to understand what are feature flags. Like I mentioned, if you had any new feature flags, a way in which you are using it in your current company, do let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.